Hello, my name's Fran from Purple Peanuts Crafting Blog um, and welcome to this mixed media canvas tutorial. In this start to finish video I'm going to show you um, a few techniques um, I used making this canvas. So um, I started off with uh, this um, artist canvas board. It's 10 by 8 inches and well as you can see or 254 by 203 millimeters um it's it's a flat one as you can as you can tell um so my thinking behind this was kind of uh well as you can see sort of sea themed um mixed a lot of mixed media there going on and uh quite steampunky as well and i just wanted to do a few sort of different and fun techniques um and incorporate those into the canvas so um i will take you through this step by step um, and let's get started then so I'll just pop that over there right so for this um, I've started off as I say with this flat canvas um, and I've just lightly uh, painted it with some gesso beforehand just to give it a bit of extra um, slight dimension and a bit of, sort of extra sticking sticking power if you like so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to spray the canvas with some um, Prima Colour Bloom uh, spray mist in glistening waves. So I'm going to start by doing that and I'm going to do the whole canvas. Okay, so that is that um, and I'm going to dry it. Okay, so I've dried the first um, layer of mist and, and next I'm going to put on some um, Tattered Angels Chalkboard Glimmer Mist in a mint chocolate chip. So I'm just going to spray that in the white caps. And then we're going to dry this next layer. So the final layer of mist I am going to use um, more Prima Color Bloom in Soft Teal. I'm just drying them individually so they don't all sort of run into each other and become a big one colour. I want them to be kind of separate and you can still see each individual colour. Okay, so I'm going to dry this now. Okay, so I've uh, put all those mists on and dried them off and the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to pop some gesso on the bottom half of the canvas which will eventually form the C. to the canvas. I'm not being too neat about it, I'm just going to Spread it on there. Okay. Right. So next, I'm going to put these um those strips of net material that I've cut um cut up, and I've got two different sorts. I've got the standard net and some more white kind of. I don't know if you can see that like mesh mesh net. So I'm just going to put these on into the gesso. And just get them stuck in. I will go over this with another layer of um, gesso just to sort of stick them in properly but provisionally. I'm just going to pop them on the top. I'm going to get a lot of texture doing this technique. I'm just going to place them here and there firstly. I'm 
and then I shall adhere them properly. Just there, and I'm just going to. I'm not going to paint all of the net into it, I'm just going to put little blobs, I guess you would say, here and there just to get it stuck down because this is going to get covered in an awful lot of uh, different mediums as we go along. It doesn't matter if your C is sticking up slightly over the canvas because we can easily snip those off after. It's best to have things too long than too short. The cool thing is you don't have to be really neat when you're doing canvases like this. Which suits me. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit more of the black up there. I'm going to trim this piece a little bit off. Great. Okay. So uh, next I am going to sprinkle some um, accent beads, uh, which is sort of tiny, tiny um, glass beads, sort of like confetti. Um, and I'm going to put those on uh, into the wet gesso for a lot more texture and I'm actually just going to pop some more gesso here and there as well because I want big pools of it just to stick these little beads into. Okay. Right. This is highly satisfying sprinkling these in. You don't have to use them but if you can get hold of some or something similar they're really, really fun to use and oops, I'm full of texture. So I'm just going to knock those any loose ones in there, but they're all stuck, which is nice. Let's move those aside. So next, I'm going to dry the gesso um, and the beads in and, and set all that. So that's nicely dried off and next I have got um, this Prima 12 by 12, by 12 wood grain mask um, which I'm going to flip over and use as waves. So I have got my paste and I am just going to place it where I like the, the grain which to go and I'm just going to go over here and there with my paste. I'm not going to do all of the uh, the bottom of the the C. I'm just going to do a little bit here and there. This is a really interesting and different way to use a mask that you that is essentially wood, but in a different way. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit more just there. Okay. Right. So 
I'm going to dry that with my heat gun again. Right, so I want to start adding some more um, colour and shimmer to the sea now. So I have got some, um, these are Cosmic Shimmer Ultra Thick Embossing Crystals. So, just take the lid off. So as you can see, it's really sort of chunky embossing crystals. Yeah, crystals. Um, and which I'm going to stick on with some um, Versamark. It's my Versamark in five. So I'm just going to tap over all of the net and all of the embossing paste that I've just put on and next I'm going to get my crystals I'm just going to sprinkle these on Again, I'm going to heat gun time. Okay, so you can see these are blistered up into perfect shimmery waves, which is just like, looks really cool as it is. But I want to put um, some more colour into this, so I'm going to use some... Um, some more glistening waves mist and I'm just going to spray over this bottom part and I'm also using some um, uh, Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist in Patina so I'm going to dry those Okay, so I'm going to have a final layer of colour, which is use some water for this because it's quite a strong colour, and I don't want I don't want it quite as strong. So I'm just going to put a couple of bits drops in some water. Use it more as a colour wash. And just spray, spray some, and just dipping my brush into it just to add a bit of darker blue to it as well. See, we've got lots of nice contrast there. So I'm just filling in with my brush anywhere that I think. Need a little bit of extra darkness and contrast. Right. And now you can see, you can see now that we've had all the colours and the mists and stuff on that it is now sort of starting to resemble the sea and pop out and you can see all the textures and the little beads and stuff. So that is looking really cool. And I'm going to just dry the mist now. Okay, so I've dried that up, and before we start on the sky, I'm just going to just snip these excess. 
excess pieces of net off. Okay. Right, so next we're going to start on the sky. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to just spread some um, paste just randomly. Here and there on the sky, kind of like clouds. I want it relatively thick. So it's a nice way to add some texture doing this with paste as well. Right. Okay, I think that's that's that. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I have got um this little Prima stamp. I think it's uh, from Romance Novel Collection, and um, it's one of my favourites. I always want to use it, it's really cool. Um, and I'm actually going to just stamp this into the uh, wet paste, just just very gently, and I'm, but I'm not putting any ink on it, so you will just see very subtly the imprint in it, which I think is really cool. If you wanted a, a more pronounced pattern, of course, you could use the ink in it, but I like the subtlety of using it without ink. I don't know if you can see, but we have got some little letters imprinted in there, so that's really cool. So next, we're going to get the heat gun on again and dry it. Right, so that's dried, and next I'm going to use another mask, which um, is another Prima one, and this is a uh, static dots, I believe. Um, so I'm just going to pop that on my canvas, and I'm actually going to do it in a messy way, and I'm just going to use my finger, because I just want to do small clusters of the dots. You could of course do the clean away using an embossing tool but I like to do things a messy way. Right, I'm just going to flip the mask because I want I'm going to go the other way now. Pop some in there, I think. Okay. So next step is drying again right now the next step is um quite fun i've got some um, regular cotton wool which i have used for the clouds so um, i'm just going to take some bunch of it and I'm just going to fashion it into what shape I want and get my gesso again and I'm just going to start by putting a blob on the canvas and then 
on there and then I'm just going to go over it with the gesso. It will stick a bit but that's okay. Use your fingers as well. It's quite messy but the effect I think is worth it because it's really fun, sort of cool, different effect I think. Just stick some down there. And also I'm just sweeping it onto the canvas, the ends is authentic cloud look. Plus it gets it stuck down a bit better as well. So I don't want to put too much gesso on the uh, on the cloud, but I just want to highlight it, and it helps it adhere as well. So it's a double purpose kind of thing. Right, so we've got the first little cloud done. I've got a couple of smaller bits that I am just going to do the same with. Okay, so I'm just going to pop one there. I want these a bit thinner than the top one. Cover that and also just a little bit, that's okay. I'll just took that slide in there. Right, so next step, I'm just I will dry that, but I'm gonna do another another step first. So I have got some um prima alphabet letters, as you can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some odd letters, if you like, the ones that you don't use that much, and I'm just going to stick them under the cloud. So I'm going to use a mix of big and small. Because you always seem to have lots of odd letters out of an alphabet pack so this is one way I like to try and use them up or we'll just lose ones that have lost the stickiness slightly it's a good way to use some Okay, so I've stuck all my random oddment stickers on and I'm just going to give it a light um, covering of gesso. Really light as well, not too prominent. Kind of looks a bit whitewashed. Really. my brush in the little crevices a little bit. Okay, so next I am going to dry the gesso on the letters and my little clouds. Right, so I've dry 
made my puffy little clouds and they look ultra cute at the minute um, and the letters so the next thing I want to do is just give the letters um, a bit of a spritz with um, this tattered angel glimmer mist in frost and I'm just going to give that a quick blast of the heat gun Another spritz with um, the patina again. I'm just building some colours up here. So that gets the heat gun. And finally, I'm just going to put a little white wash of the range of denim because this is a darker one so I just want that again quite subtle it's a very strong colour I'm just tapping the brush lightly over the letters okay so I'm just going to dry that So next, the fun part, which is the decoration. So I am going to start with um, these little Prima junkyard pipes, which are so so cute. Um, so I'm just going to play around a little bit, and I'm just going to place everything first. I'm not going to stick as I'm sure we all do. Just move that a little bit in there. So I've got um, a mechanicals cog and um, this is an old clock piece, junk clock piece. And that one's going to go there. And that one will go there. Now I've got um, a selection of flowers. Um, as you can see, uh, I have stamped this with the uh, romance novel alphabet stamp, and I've also highlighted it with gold paint, um, a little bit of gesso, and I've highlighted it with a fine liner pen as well just to give it a bit of interest and contrast so I think that little flower is going to go under the pipe it's going to go under the pipe so I'll just place everything and then I will stick it ok so what else have we got I've also done the same um, with this flower as well. All the flowers have been stamped or then highlighted with the gold and the fine liner pen. So again, you can put your flowers where you wish. Um, on this particular flower as well, I've just put a little um, Ingrid Balm, um, I'm not actually sure what these are, so a little screw head with a, with a little handle, I don't know what they're called, but they, I love them, so I've just popped one of those in the middle as well. I don't want to obstruct the clouds too much. I've got... This I've got um, a little bulb as well to go um, in my pipe area. Um, now I've just put some stuck some fine uh, jewellery wire on the back of it, and I've just put a couple of 
longer tendrils of wire hanging off the bottom and you'll see what I'll do with those in a minute. Um, so I want that just going there, I think. Now for this flower I have stuck um, a, another uh, Finnabar Mechanicals um, piece in the middle of it and I've also put a little uh, arrow, uh, clock handle um, which is a Tim Holtz one I believe and I've just um, slightly highlighted those again with uh, gold paint. It's actually um, Silks Acrylic Glazing Solar Gold. So that I think will go just up there. Okay, so I've got a little arrangement going on there, and just my final flower, and then I shall be sticking this down. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to leave the two loose tendrils, as I say, hanging down and I will show you what to do with those next. So next I have got um, another Prima Bull, which is an Ingrid Bolm one. I um, have I've actually removed the uh, text, the writing on this, as you can see in this, um, on this one it says create but I decided to do one with just a plain bulb on it so I've removed that with um, just nail varnish remover uh, and it comes off a treat so that's what I'm going to use for my little submarine um, I've also got a uh, another Funabar uh, vintage trinket um, and it's a flower and I'm going to use that as well and I'm going to make the propeller with this so I've actually painted that in um, silks acrylic glaze in African jade just to give it a bit of a blue sort of sea like tinge to it so next what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend these two back because I want a three armed propeller so I'm just going to bend them and then bend up down up down up down and then they snap off pretty easily. So this is what's going to form my little propeller so I'm just going to pop them up a bit. I'm also going to pop this little um, wing nut in the middle of it as well so I'll glue that down first. I've actually painted the um, the wing nut with gesso and then given that a coat of the African jade as well. So that is just going to go on the end of my ball. Now these two loose wires as it were. I'm just going to stick those on the bottom of my bulb. Careful not to burn myself. And I'm just going to give that another blob of glue. So I need it on the front. And then I'm just going to stick down onto the sea. So that is the main um, decoration part done. Next I want to add a little bit more texture and colour into the sea. Uh, for this I have got some um, muslin, um, just standard muslin, you can, it's like kitchen um, shops as well have it 
Um, and I'm just going to use that. So I'm going to get my paintbrush and use some gesso and just just dab a bit of gesso on and then I'm going to stick this on to just form some sea foam waves. Oops. This stuff is perfect for, for using as waves because it gives it a nice gentle texture. So I'm relatively okay with that. Um, and I'm just going to give that a quick blast with a heat gun just to dry it off. Okay, so the last step I want to do for the C is um, I've got some Prima Satan crystals. They are white and blue. And I'm just going to dot a few of these kind of like bubbles here and there right so the very final step as you can see we're pretty much done now but one final little thing I want to do is I just want to slightly um, highlight the clouds with my alphabet stamp. Just subtly very hard because I just want it barely there plus it's slightly challenging stamping on cotton ball okay so I think we are near enough finished okay so that is a finished product it's a nice little mixed media canvas um i hope you enjoyed the tutorial um so any questions you've got about anything i've used products i've used techniques i've used um please feel free to ask and i'll see you again soon bye